Today's episode is brought to you by Progressive, where drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. Quote now at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. The Elder Fuzz is defeated. Our heroes scattered to the winds. Pangla, the savior of the world, is piloting Lady Liberty, a giant robot formed from various robot first ladies. Just as it seemed all hope was won, the Trogus, aliens from outer space, have come to Earth to demand pudding. What is to be done by you? Listen to this, the new season, Our Dumb Universe, Episode 1, Trogus Dan Kent Soldier Fuzz. This is Krogus of the lead Trogus ship. Attention, giant metal robot thing. Put down your awesome sword and surrender. Sorry, saucers, but I must defend Earth. This is my home. It's where I do all my dancing. We have no doubt your dancing is delightful. But this is for the good of the galactic order. We, the Trogus, must take control of this planet. Nope! Then we must do what we must do, and we do do it well. You said doo-doo, that's funny. Okay, time to fight. Fire death lasers! I cannot believe Professor Y is dead, and all I have is her finger, which is a flash drive with her white programs. And there is another Dan Kent who is crazy. It is so strange to me. Feltina Guernica, general and former leader of Emperor Fuzzo's plush guards, until Fuzzo was deposed in a coup, and we escaped to this hilltop palace. Yeah, I know. It just happened. To me, Fuzzo, I was there. You're saying it feels like years ago. Years. <laughs> Oh, shut up, crazy Dan Kent. Look, the flying saucers are firing on Pangla, but she's using her sword to fight them off. She'll win. She won't. Wah? Who? Wah, who, indeed. I am Drogus of the Trogus. Where did you come from? That attack craft over there. We landed while you were needlessly recapping very recent events. Damn, my bad butt knife peripheral vision. I've brought 20 elite shock troops. If you resist... You will be fined and then fired upon with our tickle beams. That doesn't sound so bad. Tickle is trogus for infinite pain. So you were speaking English all this time, except for the one word which means something totally different, but also means something in English? Why didn't you just say, if you resist, you will be fired upon with our infinite pain beams? Our universal translators are made by a company that only got the contract because its CEO is blurmous with the trinooks. Cheap prices or quality goods. How do you choose in this crazy mixed up cosmos? Ooh, it's a moral quandary. So how about instead I whip you to death with my yarn tendrils? Ha! Or not. <laughs> Ow! Take that. My tendrils, they fell off from some sort of detendril ray. What was that? Some sort of detendril ray? It'll take them months to grow back. Now come with us. We came to retrieve you personally. Of course. I am the Emperor, so... Not you. Him. He has a strange stink of time particles and B.O. What will you do with us? We shall send you to... The Killing Floor. Lady Liberty, shield breach imminent. Moving into automated unity mode. Matriarch, we will hold together as long as we can. Destruction at 
Probably. Pangla, the systems aren't holding. Those aliens are too much. Driving a robot made of ladies is hard. Yay! But sad. Yay! What do we do, Miss Sandra? You got these ladies. How do we win? The best we can do is to use the escape pod and hope not too many first ladies are torn apart when this whole thing blows up. Blows? Like bubbles? If bubbles is a core breach from a repeating fuzz coil overheating. Sure. Okay, then let's scoot. Sorry, Gross. I'll try to repair you. Bye, ladies! I love being inside of you all! No! Wait! Not the killing floor! Oh, God! Sorry, uh, to the job reassignment center. You'll get jobs! Killing floor. Ah, where did that come from? That's that's not even a translation thing. That's all me. Wow, Drogus, buddy. Whoa. Ah, that's that's my bad. Man, I have to tell my space therapist about that one. Killing floor. <laughs> but what will you do once you have Earth? Oh, well, you see, it's quite blondurous. That's Trogus for. I know it's all new, but don't you freak out. I'm here to calm your fears, but to rest your doubts. We're only here to tidy up the place, to improve the worth of your pitiful race. Invasion. Yes, you're gonna see Invasion, just how great it can be Invasion, you get something you can rely on Invasion, now form yourselves in a line Invasion, now you're marching in time Invasion, all your trouble soon will be bygone Now march and smile, ha 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 Once you're retrained, you'll be totally free To work in any pudding facility And if you work hard, you won't be horribly maimed At least not on purpose by any of our maiming rays Once you get used to it, I think you'll love our colonial paradise. We'll know whether or not as we watch from our space station in the sky. Don't famous as invaders, where your collaborators will make your world greater by the standards that we favor. So turn in all the traitors, their deaths will be slow and pain. Behold, in three mere months of cultivation, see the fruits of our creation with your labor and our patience, our guiding sense of innovation, or flowing are the put plantations. The crops just tops to much elation. Approval rates rise with every poll taken. Say all the state news organizations, all are joined in celebration. Your former world of faded sensation of death and violence, iron vexation. We solved it for you, saved you from damnation. Seems your salvation was. Invasion, hey, it's gonna be great. Invasion, you'll love your new vassal state. Invasion, all your troubles soon will be buying on. Invasion, no need to feel any shame. Invasion, every beast must be tamed. Invasion, it's something you can rely on. Something you can rely on. Something you can rely on. Supporting the Fable and Folly Network. Here's another show we know you'll love. Where am I? Welcome to Desert Skies, Traveler. Your journey through the physical plane has come to an end. I am the attendant. 
My colleague here is the mechanic. Yo! This is your last stop on your way to the great beyond. It's our job to make sure you're prepared for the ride. Now, before hitting the road, we have an impressive selection of over 34 varieties of microwavable burritos. Um, what, what, what's going on? There's got to be a better afterlife than this. I mean, come on! Uh, that's offensive. Something seems to be wrong with me. You left something major undone. I have a life outside of this gas station, you know. You quite literally do not. Any hobbies? Nope. Ever travel? Nope. Love interests? Are you kidding? Oh my god. You're like the human version of a plain bagel. Cash register. How can I help you, attendant? Play some music? You got it. It's kind of funny, though. What I needed wasn't back there. It was here, waiting for me. I wonder what it feels like, Mac, to miss the physical plane, the people, you left behind? You know, I had a wife who died three years ago. Wish I could go back. No, you don't need to go back. You just need to be here. And a new traveler approaches. Ready, team? Ready. Ready Good. Let's do this. Find Desert Skies wherever you listen to podcasts. Looking to get out of the ads and back to the story? Fable and Folly Plus is a new way to support the creators you love. The podcast you're listening to right now and more than 60 others can be heard ad-free for as little as $4 a month by visiting fableandfolly.com slash plus. And now you'll start to see Fable and Folly Network shows are offering bonus content to all existing and new supporters. Find exclusive new episodes from shows like Civilized and Realms of Peril and Glory. Fable and Folly Plus. Sign up today at fableandfolly.com slash plus. Three months later, and it all pretty much happened like that song. Pudding factories, forced jobs, taxes. Oh, but I still have not gotten to see my wife, how falafagus. I am forced to run a theater while she is forced to install panels and circuits. And while we both put in for joint leave time, we have not been approved. Damn this well-functioning bureaucracy. Uh, yeah, that's great. So you want me to paint this backdrop or what? See, that's why I tell you all this. Use it. Lady, listen. I paint backdrops for the Fuzzadrome Theater. I ain't putting my passion into it. Why not? I'm afraid of being judged. If I don't let myself care, I can never be hurt. That's no way to live. That's... A gang? I just help... I got out. I'm coming. I'm coming. A oh, bike cleanest is 82 legs. Where the gerv have you been? You told me to paint the backdrop ultraviolet, and we can't even see that color, so it's not so easy. Hey, you were forced designated to be the booker and manager of the Fuzzadrome Theater, and we are the talent. Glorpo and Blore are a comedy duo par excellence, as you say in your parlance. From what I hear, you're not very famous or popular. <laughs> Indeed, chum. Sure, if we were hyper-popular, we'd be playing the inner ring systems, or at least the outer cloud. Yeah. Really? The Null destroyed the whole cloud? Yeah. <sighs> Ever since Kavold became Velmok, they've been killing more than me at Teehee's Comedy Hut on half Price Chuckle Day. Anyway, Hair Bear, we're stuck on this jerkwater backworld. Hey, no offense, but look at you. What are you? Don't answer. Anyway, Glorpo and Blor are playing a show for Supreme Allied Commander Krogus. If he likes us, we could be doing our shtick for the crumb knocks of the spiral arm. And boom, that's a lot of Kishners for the Dishners. Kishners are money, and Dishners are something that rhymes with Kishners. That's great, Mr. Glorpo. Oh, just Glorpo. Glorpo, from Hacktron in the Catskillosian belt. I was genetically modified to be the ultimate in Catskillsonian entertainment. Yeah. We all know you're descended from Bluvian gentry. Sheesh, your uncle's a Viscount and suddenly... Yeah. Uh, furthermore... I get it. Oh, I don't think you do. Prepare yourself for laughter. Get your squanch to the edge of your seat. If entertainment's what you're after, well, you're in for quite the treat. We just flew in from Blue Varts, and boy, are our wings beat. Tough crowd. No bother, soon you'll gather what I mean. Name a planet, and we played it. Name a race, and sure we slayed them with our A-game. Every asteroid station, if it's worth its weight, equated with our names. Sure, some material is dated, and we lack some elevation in our pay grade. But once the stroke of strips are aching from the jokes that we'll be making, that'll change. 
Iconically hedonic and synonymous with glee, the eponymous comics you've been waiting to see. Prepare for histrionics and to laugh until you're vomiting. They're the show that you've been waiting for. Stick around for Glopo and Blore. Raise the curtain and stomp the floor. Give it up for Glopo and Blore. Glopo and Blore. Have you heard our Who's Bloop routine? Go. Hey, Blore, who's Bloop? Blur. You don't say. Blur. You do say. Blur. Who say Ude? Blur. That's no Bloop, that's my squeam. <laughs> we start off with a number that gets everybody humming and a swaying. Then a bit on Groovish Mothers, how they smother and they suffer, they'll adore. Then Blore will get them blushing with the stories of the stunners who's been dating. And before they can recover our soft shoe, we'll have them thunder in for more. Our impressions are excellent and gently offensive. It's immensely evident that we're in our element. They'll hear us in the nosebeats because our voices ring so resonantly. If you like that, well, we got plenty more. Tell your friends it's Glorpo and Blore. Here are a few you haven't heard before, courtesy of Glorpo and Blore. <clears throat> a Julian from Dramedy in space was on his honeymoon. In case you aren't familiar with the phrase, it's an allusion to the festive ceremonial excursion that a Julian will take following marriage to a mate. So the Julian and, and then his mate replies it. Confuse yes, sir. And she replies it. So then our friend the Julian shoots down to just as Jubians and shrugging, then he laughs and tells her, Oh, Blore, you are filthy sick. I don't normally perform blue, but so much of our audience is blue, so... Now, for a little anti-gravity tap dance. I don't hear the taps. Well, there's no taps in zero gravity, but have a hanky from my central cavity. No. Seats be filling, make that killing. Space books, count them up, millions on millions. Try to step on a stage, get a pie in the face. Best know your place. You want more, we give you more. Esoteric. In hysterics. Ruin your marriage. Slaying so often, I guess we're barbaric. Classically trained, unchained. Are you not entertained? Da -da -da -da, gotta catch my breath. Something, something, global and blower. We finish with a backflip and a little bit of slapstick. And Bordeaux's his famous hat trick. And the hats they keep on stacking. And the tension is just crackling. And the audience is gasping. And the final hat gets what? It's me. Yeah! I'm really telling ya! My name is Glorpo, and this guy is Blue. And that's that. Now move that felt tush and get us a stage worthy of our shine. Yes, right away. I hate aliens. Ah, from up here on the relay ship orbiting the planet, I, High Commander Krogus, can oversee all of Earth. The buildings so small they look like earth raisins, and the people look like tiny space ants from up here. Wait, those are just raisins on the screen. Who put raisins on the screen? And they're covered in space ants? Oh, that's what I'm seeing, is actual earth raisins and actual space ants. Someone clean up this view screen. Hi, Commander Krogus. Chief Science Officer Mogus, did you put raisins on the view screen? I left some grapes, but... Oh, science. Raisinification. But let us not talk of shriveled fruit. I have big news. Is this in regards to that smelly, time-displaced fool? No. He's... We're working on him. He's with Pogus and your brother. But I have much more urgent news. The outer fuzzy layer of this planet. It's buckling. All too soon, this whole planet will implode unless we stop it. The planet is in danger. We must save Earth. But how? We can do some studies, write some peer-reviewed articles, form a committee, many committees. Oh, and ask for funding. Will that solve this? No. But what can we do? We're scientists. And as we all well know, scientists are nature's cowards. Then to save this planet, we'll need more than science. We'll need the opposite of science, pickles. Pickles and science have been fighting for millennia. But pickles have gone extinct in this fuzzy world. Ah! Why must you thwart me at every turn? Get out of here. It's up to me. Krogus doesn't succumb to failure. There might be a way if we assemble a ragtag group of weirdos. But where would we collect such a menagerie? I don't yet know. But soon, I'll find these weirdos, and I'll save this fuzzy world. Welcome to the Nobis Memorial Vessel. Please grab a tray and keep moving. Do not look at these in the eyes. 
It is the window to their souls. It's gross. Enjoy your lunch. Next. Um, some of everything, please. No. What? Human pudding server whose name tag reads Valborg, how dare you defy a member of the Trogus Special Forces? Pudding Protocol 8. Daily rations consist of only two pudding types, and you're supposed to have your selections decided when you reach the counter. Um, do you have, like, chocolate tapioca? No, but we have chocolate and tapioca. You can make those your two scoops and then mix them. But I also want vanilla... Or maybe, do you have flan? No. Um, oh man, what's that one there? Vanilla. And that? That's vanilla. You just pointed at that. And that? Tapioca. Suffering in viscous form. Tapioca. From which hell were you born? Tapioca. No, I can't shake your stink And all that I feel That I see That I think Is tapioca now First bell I'm on my knees Preparing put carafes Second bell me from my home but each day that I live on with my home beneath the sea I fear more and more my enemy lives in me laughing as I scoop beneath this pudding tyranny of tapioca crapioca how I long for your death with each iota of me till my I just have two scoops of plain. Ugh, fine. How sad to see such a warrior stoop to serving slop. But maybe I can help. Fuzzo? Indeed. I suggest we work together. You sunk my home. I'll kill but you. But we need to team up. I'll and rip we you to lint. Eat. Ah! <laughs> These panels aren't the right size. You're not the right size, indentured intern Huffalumpagus. 
We must install info panels in all sectors. It makes everything look futuristic. And Vrogus the Trinox is on the board of Panelco Industries Limited, so market forces, market forces. Market forces isn't going to make this fit. You think I like this? Overseeing forced labor interns? If the panel doesn't fit, it, it, it's like what Gleemuck says to the news on their moosh night. <laughs> Jam it in there. Judging from context, I'm going to say that was both gross and probably something I should report to HR. Just hammer, will ya? Look at Nufa. She's been just quietly working the whole time, not giving me lip. Gold star for you, Nufa. All thanks to you, Lesser Commander Bogus. See? I'm great. Better than my hero brother, Krogus. He's a real... Um, excuse me, Lesser Commander Bogus. Science Officer Bogus, what is it? That man, Dan Kent, he's strapped to the extrapolator. Hopefully, if we reboot his brain, we can figure out why he is chronologically extemporaneous. (laughs) Or we might just fry his mind. Either way, it will relieve the boredom. To the extrapolator! All thanks to you, Lesser Commander Bogus. And what does complaining get? It makes me feel better. That's your problem. You should feel nothing. Not even with your hands. That's why I wear gloves, because I feel nothing. Aren't you feeling the inside of the gloves? No, not anymore. Once. Maybe. But when you feel the glove long enough... Eventually, only the glove feels you. Um, what? I've said too much. Back to hammering. (laughs) Oh, how about that? Hey, let me out. Ah, squee. Squee, hey now, what's up? Wow! He's really... uh, What's the scientific term? Messed up. Yeah. Messed up. (laughs) Very messed up. It seems as if he radiates out of corno time. He's a time anomaly. Out of time sync with time time. Also, look at this DNA readout. (laughs) Reading? I'm not a nerd. He should at least be further studied. And by studied, I mean... (laughs) Poked with a stick. Of course. Much poking. Much poking, yes. If we use the extrapolator, we can get him to some semblance of sanity. But since it's experimental and there are laws or whatever, we need you to authorize the use as a military exception in wartime. You know, just to cover our seven butts. Sure, sure. Use the extrapolator. Hit it! Ouch. <laughs> I think he's irreparably damaged. Damaged? That's just a tuxedo term for a wrinkled tank top condition. You're damaged, pal. And by damaged, I mean damn aged. As in old. But what is old but just the age of a man on the hat of the world? What are you, anyway? Some sort of intergalactic goof-around creep? Hooking up a cop and giving him the jolt juice to get your jollies? He's too far gone. Let's just turn him into paste. No, no. He might just work out. Let his brain settle a bit. Like a good pudding. Ooh, pudding. I'll jam a universal translator into his brain. It's the new model includes intro blorish. If nothing else, he'll understand us. Hey, hey, what are you doing with that doohickey? Wowza, get that away from my listening hole. Yeah. Ow. Oh, that smarts. Like when I thought there was a tiny Frankenstein in my ear. I tried to light a Q-tip as a torch to flush him out, but I think he just went deeper. And also, I realized Frankenstein was the guy, not the monster. So, lesson learned. I'll run some tests, lesser commander. Hey, I can understand yous. Now you speak good English like me do. See if his temporal aura can be of use even if he is a grade A moron. I like the grade A part. Do as you will, Doctor. I will be in my quarters. By Drogus. By Drogus. He seems nice. So, you guys got a TV or something? No, but I have these very sharp instruments I'm going to use on you. Now, open wide. Open what? Everything! 
Can the world be saved? Is it too late? Will Fuzzo and Valborg settle their differences? What if Dan Kent, Pangla and Sandra and the First Ladies? Will Veltina get that backdrop painted? Find out next time on Our Dumb Universe, Episode 2, Their Eyes Were Watching Trogus. The Fall of the House of Sunshine is a Roy Gold production. It was written by Jonathan Goldberg with music by Matt Roy Berger. Learn more about the show and cast at podmusical.com. If you'd like to support the show, check out our Patreon and Himalaya Plus. And thanks to all our wonderful Kickstarter backers who made this season possible. You gave us a kick to the heart. In the good way, not in the martial arts movie exploding heart way. I'll avenge you, sensei. Remember to like, rate, subscribe, and most of all, have a suntabulous bicuspid of a day. And that, and that, um, oh man, what's that one there? The Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish.